Hello everyone, this is Stephen from thedarkmark.com. Thedarkmark.com is an amazing community powered by enthusiasts such as yourself, where you can buy and sell your horror and sci-fi items, and not have to worry about the crazy fees that are usually associated with selling. Today we are going to be listening to the second part of the interview with Steve Biggs from FX Supply. This man, among his many other accomplishments, which you will be hearing about later on, is responsible for bringing animatronics into the haunt industry. So grab some popcorn and your favorite machete, and let's get started. One, two, three, four, love your hands. He was over in Santa Monica, and by then I was a mechanical animator. I was making robots for amusement parks. Awesome. How did you like doing the robot for the amusement park? How did that go? Well, I liked it better because um, in film work, you just do the minimum thing to get the shot. And sometimes what you make is just a blur. You know, if you make a fake axe, it's just a rubber axe and you're, somebody's fighting with it. and So it's just a blur. But amusement park work is completely different. It's it actually are these are standalone robots. There's no puppeteer. They're computer controlled, and then they got to hold together for years, many many years. So you can you can take some pride in your work. And I'll tell you, the the robots that uh, I made and w with my fellow animators, they were they were works of art. They were gorgeous. They would you know, paint the parts and anodize them and... Which leads me into my next question, that uh, you were the originator of bringing uh, pneumatics and whatnot into the haunted industry. But what led you to start working with that? Just because of your experience with uh, the film industry that you wanted to kind of cross it over with the, with the theme parks or how did that get started? Well, what happened was um, right after, when I when I started Special Effects Supply, our, our t market target was uh, the haunted house industry. And back then, 80% of our business was, was haunts. And, um, you know, after you've worked on amusement park, you know, there's just, just a gigantic technical difference between the two. Mm -hmm. Although, in my opinion, a haunt, a good haunt is much more uh, theatrically interesting, but what was hap what would what would happen is people would make these, oh, uh, maybe one or two movement little puppets and things, and they had, everybody was using servo motor motors, and servo motors take a lot of space, and they're very weak, and this the thing that made sense was to just okay, just do that with, with pneumatics. And in some very rare circumstances, use hydraulics. But, uh, it, you know, for me, it was just an easy thing. And what happened was, uh, we, we, at first, we, we thought, okay, we will, we will make, you know, a pop-up, and it will have a, um, you know, like a skull on it or whatever. And then we did some serious soul searching in terms of the props. And what what happens is people don't think, oh, that's a, that's a pop up with a skull on it. What they do is they think that's a skull that pops up. And the subtle difference is if they've already got a skull in their haunt, they're suddenly not interested in my device. So what we did is we we created what in the industry became known as naked animation which was just the mechanical parts, the parts that people can't, you know, if they're, you're, every chaunter doesn't have a machine shop and a welder. Well, they might have a welder, but they don't have a lathe and a mill and, and in the interest. So we made, oh man, probably about a dozen different devices that would just move, move whatever they wanted to attach to it. Oh, so you would have you would supply the kit, and then they would have their own props and whatnot that they could attach to it, and do it that way right, instead of buying to, everything. If, right. If they wanted a dummy to pop up out of a coffin, uh, they just buy this device from from me for 
think $125, usually uh, activated with 12 volts. So I could just put a car battery in it so it could be out in a field. And then um, they just put their own corpse on it. Oh. I think we called that a corpse lifter. Yeah, we made a, uh, quite a few different little designs. Uh, they were all quite robust. The thing about pneumatics is that you get you can get a one inch cylinder, put 100 psi on it, and that will lift 95 pounds. Oh wow! And uh, you know, and then you think of an electric motor that would do that. It, the motor itself would weigh, you know, maybe 15, 20 pounds, and then a servo. You couldn't buy a servo that big, so. Um, it makes a lot of sense to go to pneumatics. Wow, what was the one of your more uh, enjoyable projects that you worked on? Oh, the, the things I enjoyed most were the uh, individual, you know, the custom-made things. Boy, that's like trying to <laughs> ask somebody who their favorite child was. And I think one of the funnest things we did was a, um, a thing that would raise a coffin and an actor up out of a grave. Um, you know, like they were hinged at their hinged at their heels, and then they would just rise up out of the grave. Oh wow! Wow. Uh, okay. What did you use that for? That was for a haunt or for the theme park? Yeah, we did that for a haunt, and I have no idea who it was for. I can't remember, but it was a lot of fun. Wow. What do you think? <clears throat> what do you think of the haunt industry today? And that is going to be it for today. So be sure to follow us on social media, such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. And we will keep you notified when the next one is up. See you then.